Well, thank you so much. Um, let me see if I can get this here. Just uh, again, a massive uh, round of applause to the previous speakers, Maria and Nena. I think they've done a really good job of 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 um, kind of showing the impact that their that their projects have made, which is kind of what I'm talking about today. I'm not going to talk about a specific project, but rather just about a, a principle that many in the room, most in the room, all in the room might might know. Um, but this, you know, let's just use this either as a refresher course or. Uh, a chance to kind of look inwardly and see, are we actually uh, collecting metrics that matter? Um, you know, we're, we're all here to, to do good, we're, you know, nonprofit, civic technology, and impact metrics are, you know, how we prove that we are, we are doing something good. It also allows us to get money from funders. Um, so, you know, uh, showing, showing how much impact we do can, can be very, very helpful there. And then as a bonus, um, I think, you know, looking after your your impact metrics, understanding how you're actually making an impact and, and building that into your organization uh, actually improves performance. Um, so I'd like to start with a story. Um, a DIL who was the founder uh, of Open Up, which used to be Code for SA. Uh, we had an all hands, a quarterly all hands uh, one year, and he comes in, first thing he says, it's nine o'clock in the morning, I don't think anyone's even had their coffee yet, is, why should people give us money? Why should they fund our projects instead of feeding a hungry child? And we're just like, oh, geez. that's a hell of a way to start, you know? Um, it kind of links up to what Enrique was saying yesterday about, you know, the firefighters and the, and the sand pits and a lot of civic technology, especially us who work across a lot of different uh, kind of thematic areas. You know, we're in the sandbox. Um, how do we justify the work that we do. How do we get what we're doing in the sandbox to those firefighters? Um, just a little bit about me. My name's Sean Russell. Um, I work at Open Up. I'm a mostly a project manager, sometimes a product owner. Um, uh, we're a small company, small organization, so kind of those things blur quite a lot. Uh, I used to work for a land and housing activist organization. You know, I was more on the firefighting side. Um, we would stop evictions, we would go and support people at courts. We occupied a couple of buildings in, in Cape Town. If anybody knows Cape Town, it's, it's kind of a, a, an apartheid-built city that still kind of is, is designated along uh, racial lines. So we, you know, we were, I was at the forefront there and then, and then I, I moved over to, to civic technology. So I have a law, a law activism and kind of law tech background. I went from activism to kind of law tech um, and I, I, as it says, I work across a range of thematic areas, but I moved from firefighting to the, to the sandbox. Um, and so maybe this talk comes from a bit of a crisis of conscious, you know, am I doing good? Is it, it's nice and cushy to sit behind the, behind the laptop and not kind of engage directly with the, the beneficiaries and the people you're trying to help and to, to make an impact. And, you know, that's why, um, I kind of, I think this. This talk, and it, will, it actually comes from a, from a workshop, was something that tried to kind of allay those fears. You know, how do I know for sure that the work that we're doing is, is impactful? Um, so my work covers climate change, evictions, parliamentary accountability, small-scale farming, political party funding, and lottery grant corruption, and many, many more. Sounds like the most amazing organization in the world that's, that's doing absolutely everything. But when you work with other organizations, or, across a range of different uh, topics, you don't get to go very deep on, on each one. You're providing a little bit of support here, a little bit of data work there, you're building an app, and that's kind of what can divorce you a lot from uh, the impact that these organizations are, are making. And it's also, I mean, I don't want to be negative, I, I want to be optimistic, but sometimes a lot of organizations and partners you work with, they just want something. I want something that does X, and they're not really thinking about the impact and not thinking about how they should be tracking the impact of what they do. They do amazing work. They're just struggling with that last bit of, of, of kind of measurement. Um, so yeah, so, so why, why work in the sandbox? Why, why not just feed hungry children? Why not just provide housing to those who don't have it? Um, why, why civic technology? And I think you know, there, there are more reasons in this, but these are the ones that we came up with in, in the workshop that we had internally. It's systemic change. You know, we have the ability to, to change systems, and sometimes when you just deal with the, the, um, 
the results of the, the problem, you don't deal with the cause. Um, you can also do direct and direct impact through, through, through civic technology. You can scale, you know, you can work globally, you can create a tool um, that, uh, you know, can work across the world. So a little bit of work here can scale exponentially. Um, and then one thing that I didn't actually think of that someone else came up with um, is that if civil society aren't doing these things, then the for-profit companies will be, will be taking up all of that space. So if we aren't present in those spaces because we are only fighting fires, we, we aren't coming up with innovative ways to, to think about these problems, then you know, that space is taken up by for-profits and there's not much we can do. So we believe we can make a positive impact on the world. So that takes us to you know, impact, impact metrics. How do we measure impact and what, what are we doing wrong? And I think we, my, my organization, if, we, if we're fully honest, we, we make the, the mistake we're in the trap of, of focusing too much on the outputs and not enough on the outcomes. Um, and Maria and Nene, they did a great job of, of showing the outcomes that they do. But because we work across so many different things, you sometimes just phone it in and you just like, uh, we don't actually have a time to really think about who the end beneficiaries are of the tools that we're creating, because it's easier just to kind of focus on, on the outputs. You know, how many articles have we written? How many data stories have we published? Uh, what are the user, user numbers on our apps? Um, how many workshops, you know? It's, it's, workshops are super, super impactful, but if we're just counting the number of um, workshops we've done or trainings we've done and how many people have come to that, that doesn't actually get to the heart of the impact that's, that's, um, that they are creating. Um, and I very cheekily threw in conferences there as well. Um, so yeah, so, so those are outputs. What about outcomes? Not being evicted, that's an outcome. Reducing carbon emissions, that's an outcome. Number of criminals prosecuted, that's an outcome. Uh, mortality rates decrease, uh, an increase in, of, of girls in school. All of these things are the change that we want to see in the world. Um, and these are the, the outcomes that we should be measuring. So why don't we measure them? Because outputs are, are easy to measure. They're within, within our control. If we, if outputs, or rather if, if, if outcomes were easy and within our control, we wouldn't need to do the outputs. We would just go directly to, to the change and say, okay, well, we want the world to be different. Let's click our fingers and it's, and it's different. But unfortunately, um, we don't have control. So what we need to do is we need to bring these outcomes closer to our sphere of control and put it in our sphere of influence out from the, kind of that soup on the, on the outside there. Um, so how do we how do we think better about um, uh, in what what an actual impact metric is? How do we how do we measure those outcomes? Um, and it's you know our work is hard, so we don't need to make it complicated. Um, a very kind of simple uh, formula. You know what is the change you want to see in the world? Uh, what what change you want to see? Is it something to go up? Something to go down? What is the thing that we're trying to change and for whom? So it's just these three things. And if we focus on these and how to phrase outcomes, we can very quickly get to cracking better, better metrics than we currently do. Increase, decrease, improve, reduce uh, skills, behaviors uh, in a certain population group. So there's some nice examples here. Improve educational outcomes for girls aged 12 to 18 in whatever province, or reduce unemployment in people aged 16 to 28 in whatever province, and then uh, decrease hours needed to do your tax. So people who run their own, for people who run their own businesses. And as it says here, like how, how are accounting software doing this better than, than we are? Um, and it just kind of made me think. So um, I know the Slido is being used for, for questions, but I mean, there's a lot of experience. There's not a lot, a lot of knowledge in this room, and it would be great if we also used it to kind of uh, contribute, make a contribution to this discussion and maybe we can chat about it later. So it doesn't actually have to be a question. It can be, hey, this is an experience I had where we did uh, good measurement, impact measurement, we did bad measurement impact, or we were a little bit misguided and hopefully we got back on track. Um, so as a bad, a, an example of bad is we, there's a thing called NPR that we built was uh, medicine, medicine price registry, which basically gave you the prices for all the medicines across South Africa. Um, at their lowest, their lowest price, basically a massive database, and you could basically find out if you were being overcharged. 
Um, it was a legacy tool. We built it. We kind of keep it updated, but but it hasn't it hasn't got any funding, and we don't measure any of the impact from it. That website went down, and we just got emails and emails and calls and calls and calls. So it's there is an impact. There's a massive real world impact. We just weren't measuring it. Um, for misguided, I would say uh, I worked a lot in evictions. We built an eviction guide, an online guide uh, to help people kind of uh, not be evicted into homelessness and with a lot of information that they could go to take to court to sort of defend themselves. It's, it's, not a, it's not a good idea to defend yourself in court, but there are a lot of things that people can do to take a lot more agency within their own uh, case. Um, and we were tracking user metrics. We want more people coming to our website. That encouraged us to, to um, improve the SEO, which drove more people to the website. But we weren't actually measuring any of the impact. And we made a switch there because we actually started getting testimonials through one of our uh, registration links. Uh, you could register for certain, certain things. And the people on there were explaining and telling us and giving us qualitative uh, stories about uh, how they used the guide and the improvements that it made to their to their lives and to to them going to to court, and you know one person it's a testimonial, but once you start building that up over time, it's a, it's, it's become an amazing database of of the impact of something like the evictions guide. Um, and then on the good side, uh, we we run a, a training uh, a training data training course for for, for young adults. Um, and we were tracking, you know, how many of them get employed afterwards or how many of them go into political office. Um, and then another good one was our lottery tool, which has basically two users. So if user metrics are important to you, this is probably one of the worst websites uh, or, or tools we've ever built. Um, but I think three or four investigations have come from it. Um, it was about lottery grants, so corruption in lottery grants. Uh, and we can total up the amount of money, which is actually increasing all the time. It's in the tens to twenties and millions of rands. Um, how much money is being recovered from that? So there's been huge, a huge amount of impact from a website that has two users, which is which we thought really, really interesting. Yeah. So now we know what we what we want to measure. Um, we know the outcomes, and we know how to phrase how we get those outcomes. Uh, so, so what do we do? We've got to measure. Uh, and it's relatively simple. Again, not easy, but simple. Uh, you, can, you need a baseline. You know, what was happening before we came along, whatever, what it, whatever intervention it is. Um, what's the control? What's happening to those without your service or your app or your tool or whatever? And then we need to collect. You know, what's happened to those who have used what, we, what, what, what we've created? Um, and so how do we collect these difficult metrics? Um, and again, uh, there's no, unfortunately, silver bullet here. A lot of this is, is, is just collecting data, collecting it well, and then building it uh, into, your, into your systems. Do you need quantitative? Do you need qualitative? Do you need a, a mix of both? What's the format? Surveys, focus groups, uh, phone calls. Um, and one nice thing uh, is that there's a, there's a little bit of a time machine. Um, where if you forget to collect baseline and you know things just get built and they go out there, or you come in halfway through a project, you can still find a control group that have never heard of what you've been doing uh, and still get that approximation of a, of a baseline. So all is not lost if you don't have your, your baseline data. And then you've got to collect. It's super resource intensive. Um, hopefully you've got researchers on your staff or an M&E team, but if you can build it into your system, and more importantly, if you can build it into your, your organizational culture, it gets better, it gets easier, and it gets more powerful as you collect this, this, this impact uh, information. And then lastly, you need to collect it ethically, accurately, and fairly. Uh, how difficult is it to collect this stuff? Well, from our uh, workshop, we actually have no idea. So this wasn't super helpful, but it was fun. Um, and then the last piece of the puzzle with impacts um, is stories. You know, uh, at the end of the day, the numbers are interesting, but if you can't link that to an impact story, you kind of miss the, the full force of the impact that you're trying to create. So an example here is um, the African National Congress, so the biggest party in, in South Africa, at the recent elections a couple of weeks ago, got 18% fewer votes 
Um, and I mean, that's a big number. That's huge. But the story is that they went from a majority to um, being the biggest party still, but not having an outright majority. And they now have to form coalition governments with a, a coalition government with other parties. And that's going to have massive ramifications for, for, the, for our country over the next few years. Um, so when you link it to a story, you know, that's, that's when your, your impact metrics, metrics really, really matter. Um, so we've got quantitative metrics. Uh, these are called killer metrics. 80% of officers reduce waiting times or 75% of officers improve service quality. Uh, and then the ones that I really like the most is the qualitative examples that you can take from, from the data that you've collected. So this example, one police station fired their entire male staff for mistreating women. They hired women instead and their service quality tripled. So, I mean, if that's, that's not an impactful story, then I don't know what is. Um, yeah. So... Now you know, hopefully, if you're, if you're actually measuring your impact, and I hope some people have put uh, forward some nice examples uh, using Slido. Uh, and if you're not, uh, wrap on the wrists, on the knuckles, um, but you have the tools to start. Um, good luck.